We begin the Gemara today on Daf Tezayin Amid Aleph, the fifth line from the top of the Yomot. Ubishtar. said in the Mishnah, one of the ways to acquire an Eved Ivri is through Shtar. So the Gemara Minolon, what's the source in the Pasuk for the Kenyan of Shtar by an Eved Ivri? Omarule, Omakra, the Pasuk says, regarding an Oma Ivriya, and by Oma Ivriya, one of the things that could be done with her is that the master goes and marries her. And there the Pasuk describes and says, macheres, loy, that if along with this Amma Ivriya, that the, um, that the Odin marries, he also has another wife that he marries to, and then the, the Pasuk that continues. But the point is, Hekisha Kosov Lacheres. The Tate is comparing a Amma Ivriya to Acheres, which is a Isha that gets married. And therefore we say, Ma Acheres, Bishtar, just like an Isha, one of the ways of Kiddushan is through Shtar. So too, the Alma Ivriya is acquired to her master with Shtar. Okay, so this is uh, the, the source here, comparing it to Kiddushin. Mm-hmm. Says the Gemara, this, this source can't be true according to everybody. Because ha, niche, this is a good source. Laman Omar, according to the opinion that says that Shtar Alma Ivriya, that the Shtar that you acquire an Alma Ivriya with, Oden Kaisvai. The master is the one that writes the Shtar. So the master is acquiring the Amma Ivriya, he's the Kaina, he's, and he writes it. And this is similar to the way it is by Kiddushin. Who writes the Shtar by Kiddushin? The, the, the man, the husband that's acquiring, writes. So according to this opinion, we can say that the source of Shtar by Amma Ivriya is from Kiddushin, because we see that it's the same, similar to the one that writes it. El Laman Omar, however, there's another opinion which Yomar will soon quote, that Av Kaisvai, when it comes to the Shtar Va'am Ivriya of the father that's selling his daughter to the master, he's the one that writes the Shtar. The father that's selling writes the Shtar. Not like Kedushin, which is the man that's acquiring the Isha, writes the Shtar. So, Ma'ikalamema, what can we say? From where is the source of Shtar? It can't be from the comparison to Isha by Kedushin. So, what's the source of this Machlaikis? The Itmer, we learned the Machlaikis, Shtar Om Ivriya. The Shtar to acquire an Om Ivriya. Mi Kaisvai, who writes the Shtar? Ravuna, Ma, Ravuna says, Odin Kaisvai. The master writes the Shtar. And he gives it to the <coughs> father of the, of the girl, of the Amma, and that's uh, how the Kenya takes effect. Rav Chista, Amma, Rav Chista says, No, Av Kaisvai. The Shtar of the Amma Ivriya, the father writes in the Shtar that I am selling my daughter to you and gives it to the master, and that's how the Kenyan takes effect. So according to Rav Chista, it's not the Kaina that's writing it, it's the Meicher, the father that's selling the daughter that's writing it. You can't say it's compared to Kedushin. What it says, Ha So according to Ravone, we could say that it learned out, learned out from Imacheres to compare to Kedushin. But El Rav Chiste, Michael Amema. According to Rav Chiste, it's not compared to Kedushin. So what is the source for the Kenyan of Shtar by an Omivriya? There's another possible to learn out from. And this is a Pasuk that says, also regarding Oma Ivriya, that when she leaves from her master, she cannot leave the same way that Avodim leave. And here, the Lashon of Avodim in this Pasuk refers to an Evet Kanani. One of the ways Evet Kanani leaves his master is if his master knocks out one of the Avodim. For example, he blinds him, so then he goes free. So over here, what the Pasuk is saying is, by Oma Ivriya, if the master harms the Om Ivriya in such a way, like, like blinding the Om Ivriya, she does not go free. She remains a, a maid for the master. He has, he's going to have to pay her whatever damages he owes her for this, for the eye or whatever else it is. But she has to work until the end of the six years. That's mm-hmm. the simple shot of the Pasik. So here, when it says, So the Pasik is saying she doesn't leave. She, she doesn't go out. It doesn't say, It says, She doesn't go out like the Avodim. Aval, from this we have to understand that Niknasik a Kenyan of Avodim. When she's a quieter master, the Kenyan is similar to the Kenyan of Avodim. So which Kenyan is, the, is it by Om Ivriya, which is similar to by Nevit Kanani, my new, which Kenyan is this? Shtar, the Kenyan of Shtar. You, you acquire an Evit Kanani with a Shtar, and the reason is because the Evit Kanani is similar to Akarka, which is acquired with a Shtar. So too, this uh, Om Ivriya compared to Evit Kanani is acquired with a Shtar. There's one other way that the, the, the Evet Kanani you can acquire, besides Kesef that we already spoke about before. But, but maybe I should say, Aval Niknesi Kikinian Avodim, that I compare the Om Ivriya to say that she's acquired to her master like an Evet Kanani, Omai Niyo Chazoke. 
And that is a Kenyan of Chazaka. The Gemara will later describe how, what exactly is the Kenyan of Chazaka regarding an Evet. But Chazaka is another Kenyan in a Karka. When you work in the Karka, you make a fence in the Karka and so on. And because the Evet Kanani is compared to Karka. So an Evet Kanani could be acquired by Chazaka. So maybe Alma Ivriya should be acquired by Chazaka. Not Shta. And says the Gemara, but there's another Pasik that says that we don't compare an Alma Ivriya to an Evet Kanani. Amakra, the Pasik says, Visnachaltem Oisam Lovnechem Acharechem, that they, which is an Evet Kanani, is inherited to the children, just like the, the father when he passes away, he owns a piece of property, and the children inherit it with Chazake, and so too the, the children in, inherit the Evet Kanani. But the Pasik is emphasizing Oisam, and from this we learn out, Oisam be Chazake, that the children are going to be Kaina. The Evet Kanani with Chazake, and Bechlal, there's the Kenyan of Chazake by an Evet Kanani, but Velo Yachir Bechazake. There's no one else that you Kenyan with Chazake. So you can't say that the comparison is that Ome Ivriya is like Evet Kanani that you Kenyan with Chazake. So we have two Psukim, one Pasik saying that we compare Evet Ivriya to Evet Kanani, and one Pasik that says that no, it's Oisam Veloi that we don't compare. But the Gemara asks, we can really flip this around. Maybe I should say, Oisom Bishtar, Velo Yacher Bishtar. When it says, Visnachaltem, Oisom Luvnechem Achrechem, maybe it's saying that only an Evet Kanani is acquired like Karka through a star, but an Om Ivriya is not acquired through a star. So maybe Adarabah, this Pasik is coming to exclude that there's no star by an Om Ivriya. So the Gemara now goes back to the previous Pasik. No, but Hoksiv, Loiseite, could say so of Adam. We had the other Pasik that says that she doesn't leave like an Evet Kanani, but she is acquired like an Evet Kanani. So we do compare it to Evet Kanani regarding Shtar. So the Gemara asks, so Mara Isa, what do you see to say? You have one Pasik that says to compare. Another Pasik that say that it's not like Evet Kanani. So what do you see to say that when it comes to Shtar, you compare to the Evet Kanani? When it comes to Chazak, it's not like Evet Kanani. And says the Gemara, Mistavre, because logically it makes sense to say, Shtar Havalei Lerabuye, that we should include that Om Ivriya is like Evet Kanani regarding Shtar, because Shtar is a strong Kenyan that relates to Om Ivriya. She came mighty be Bas Yisrael. We find already that Shtar is a Kenyan that's used for a Bas Yisrael when it comes to a get that she should acquire her independence. It's through Shtar, a get which is a Shtar. So we see that the Kayach of a Shtar works by a Bas Yisrael. So therefore, it's more Mustaver to say as well over here that we compare Evet Kanani to Om Ivriya that the Shtar works. No, I'll give you a svara that Chazaka is a Kenyan that's stronger, that should work for a uh, Bas Yisrael or for Om Ivriya. Chazaka Avalele you should learn out and compare Chazaka from Evet Kanani. I see by the Kenyan of Chazaka, if you have the property of a Ger, he passes away and a Ger, typically to, to, his karka is left alone with no Yershim. So if there's no Yershim, so now what happens? Who acquires it? It's basically Hefker. Anybody that comes in and does Chazake, he works in the field, puts up a fence, it becomes his. So I see the Kenyan of Chazake is a very strong Kenyan. The Rishayim said, the Ritfer says that it says Nichsei Hager, even though Chazake is really a Kenyan for any Karka, because usually by Karka there's a seller and there's a buyer. The Gemara wants to bring an example where it's Hefker, and there's no, no one that's even selling it to you, but Chazake has a Kayach to be kind of. When you buy something without a meicher that's selling it to you, it's more difficult to create this Kenyan because there's no one that's giving it to you. And nevertheless, Chazaka works. That shows how powerful Chazaka is. So maybe we should, we should say, we should learn out from Evet Kanani that Chazaka does work by Amivriya even more than Shtar. And says the Gemara, but Be'ishus mi'olay ashkechan. The Kenyan of Chazaka we don't find in the concept of Ishus, of marriage. And Shtar, which is by a get, is related to the union of marriage. So therefore, there's more of a svara to learn out that Om Ivriya is kind of with Shtar. It's not clear in the Gemara how the Indian of Ishus comes in here, because we're not talking about the Indian of marriage. The uh, Rishayim discussed this. But um, one of the Pshatim that the Maharit says in the Gemara is that even though we're talking about Om Ivriya, which is not an Indian of Ishus, yeah. but it is an Indian of Ishus, because there's an Indian of Yield, which means the master buys the Om Ivriya, and then after he buys her, he can marry her. And when he marries her, he marries her with the money that he paid her in the beginning, meaning right in the beginning when he acquires her as an Om Ivriya, included in that is a Kayach for Ishus. So therefore, when it comes to acquiring Om Ivriya, when you see that there's a Kenyan in Shtad, that it works for Ishus, there's more of a Swara to say that this is the Kenyan that works for Om Ivriya and not the Kenyan of Chazaka. Because Chazaka works for Karka, that's not related to the kind of Kenyan that we're talking about, the Kenyan of Om Ivriya. Ibai Seime, another Swara we could say, why? In these two psukim here, and it's not clear 
we, we, whether we should be mar beshtar and be moitzi chazake, or maybe the opposite. So I can tell you that lohachi ahani imacheres. For this, the pasuk of imacheres that we brought before, that we compare a omevria to a isha, that's the acheres. The acheres is isha. For that, we do rely on that pasuk to be megale. Which pasuk is marb and which pasuk is memayit? So as Rashi explains, what the Gemara means to say is the Gemara before explained that according to Rav Chista that says that the Kenyan of Shtar by Omivri is different than the Kenyan of Shtar than an Isha because over here by the Omivri the father writes the Shtar, not the other, not the master, like like it would be by Kedushin that the Chassan that's buying writes the Shtar. So we can't. That's not the source. You can't learn how to compare it to Isha. But nevertheless, that pasuk could be used over here when we have these two psukim. And we need some kind of a gili milsa to tell me whether I should be mar b'shtar and be moitze chazaka, or maybe the opposite. So we use that lashon of the pasuk of acheres to say, to be megala, that the pshat is that we're mar b'shtar. Because acheres means a isha, and by isha is shtar, there's no chazaka. So the gabi, this gili milsa, we could use that pasuk. And the Gemara goes back to Rav Hone's opinion. Rav Hone, hi avoda, my daughter's pay. What does Rav Hone learn out from this pasuk of leisei tzikitzei avoda? Because according to him, the source for Shtar, Taka comes from Im Acheres. He compares the Shtar of Kiddushin to the Shtar of Om Evri. He doesn't need at all this source of Leisei Tzikisei Savadim. So what does he learn from here? And says the Gemara, Ha'umi Bayale. He learns out from that Pasuk, which is really the simple Pshat of the Pasuk, She'ene Yaitze Bero Shevarim, Ke'evet, that she does not leave her master similar to the way it is by an Evet Kanani. That if the Evet Kanani knocks out any of the Rosh Yevarim, any of the limbs of this Evet Kanani, he goes free. And that kind of a freedom does not apply to the Om Evriya. That's a simple pshat. Rav Chiste, and according to Rav Chiste, that uses this Pasuk to teach me that she does not leave Kitzay Savodim, but we darshan that she doesn't get acquired through Shtar. So how, how can he make this Rosh if we need it for the simple pshat of the Pasuk? So he'll answer you, that she does not go out in this way that slaves go out. The Evet Kanani goes out. My Kitsei Savodim. That extra word of Kitsei Savodim is coming to emphasize that she's not compared to an Evet when she leaves, but she is compared to an Evet when she gets acquired. So Shema Minot Tartu, we can learn the second Allah here as well, both of the Allahs and also the Allah that she's acquired by Shtar. Tzad in the Mishnah, the Kainas Atzma B'Shanim. That when it comes to an Evet, so after years, which is the six years, he works for his master, he's free. The Pasik says, After six years, he goes free. Yevil, another way is acquired is through Yevil. The Pasik says, Until Yevil, he works with the master. The other thing it said in the Mishnah, Bigiroin Kesef, that an Evet that's working for his master, so the master paid him whatever price, let's say $600 corresponding to six years. And he worked three years, so Giroin Kesef means you deduct the three hundred dollars that he already worked for. He has to pay back his master three hundred dollars, and then he goes free. What's the source for this? Oma Chizkiya, the Oma Kra, the Hefta. Pasuk says the Hefta, which means that the master should help the slave or the or the maid go free. It doesn't say the Niftis that she gets redeemed. The Hefta, which goes on the master, he helps her be redeemed. Malame that teaches us Shemigareya Pidyayna Viyaitse. That the master doesn't uh, charge her or him but to give back all the money that he paid when he acquired her, but he gives back the, the, only the chilek of the money that he did not work for yet, and then he goes free. Tane, we learned in Abraisa. Huh? Isn't that the, why, regarding why do the, the hefta, why do you need the, the, the chiddush of Giro and Kesef? Yeah. Huh? Right. Right, right. Why do you need a pasik for it? Want, pasik, that if you worked a certain amount. I don't want to sell it to you. Right. I mean, if, the, if the Aden says, I paid for you, you want to sell you, sell you, you want to buy yourself back, pay the full price that I paid for you. Yeah, yeah. But I work for you then. Okay. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Tana, so the Gemara says, now when you, when you buy yourself back for your master. So we learned in Abraisa about this, that he or she could buy herself back, him, him or herself back, whether with actual money or Shavakesef, any other things that have a value of money, and Ubishtar, and also with Shtar. So the Gemara explains what these three details are. Kesef, the fact that he could acquire himself back from his master with Kesef, the Chesif, the Pasik says, Mikesef, Miknasai. That, that's actually a pasuk that's written by an Evid that's sold to a guy. 
that if the pasuk there says in Moed Rabbis Pashanim Lufian Yashiv Gulasai Mikasef Miknasai that he returns the money based on the years that he didn't work, so he gives back Mikas. So it says clearly Kasef. Shava Kasef Nami. The fact that it doesn't have to be actual Kasef, but you can use Shava Kasef as well, because the pasuk says Yashiv Gulasai. The word Yashiv is an extra word. Could have just said Lufian Gulasai. According to the years that he didn't work, that's his Gula. The word Yashiv says that he returns. He gets his freedom. In another way, not even if he doesn't own, he doesn't have any money, but he can find valuables to give for this. Yashiv Gulasai Amar Rahman. Al Rabbi Shavu Kesef Kesef. That Shavu Kesef is the same as Kesef. This is not only here by Eved Ivri or Om Ivriyav. This is also by Kiddush, and this is actually according to Taisus. This is the source for Kiddush as well. That Shavu Kesef is Kesef. But Ella Haishtar. When the when the Brayse here says. That a evet could free himself with a star. What kind of a star are we talking about? So lechayda means a star. The master writes to the evet, a star. You're free. He's mishachra the evet. Correct the gemara, but hey chidami. Ilaim the cost of leishtare ad the Oh, the gemara starts off a step before. If you're going to say what we're talking about over here is this evet that's freeing himself from his master has no money. He has no money. He has no valuables. No kesef. No shava kesef. So what does he do? He writes to his master, Shtar, I owe you this and this amount of money, and he gives it to the master, and that has the value of money, because now the master can go and collect this money from him in the future. Says the Gemara, if that's the Shtar Admei for the money that he would owe him, Hainu Kesef. That's the same point as Kesef or Shava Kesef. Why, why is the Braise spelling it out separately? Shtar sounds like it's not Kesef and not Shava Kesef. Elo Shichro. The star is a star shechror that the master writes to his eved ivri. You're free. That's the star. Frak the gemara star lamali. If that's what it is, why would the why would the master have to write a star that he's freeing the eved ivri? Lemele ba petrei. Let the master say to his eved in front of two people. Zil, go. You're free to go without writing a star. Inami ba'api beidine. Or let him say in front of a bezdin, so it should be verified and everyone knows he said. So zil, go. What's the basis of the Gemara's question? What the Gemara is asking is, we know by Nevid Kanani the master has to write a star, just like by a, by a Isha. You need a proper get in order to create the Kirisus. When it comes to an Evid Kanani, you also need a proper star in order to create a Shikhrur from the master. But over there, the reason is because there's a real ownership. The master owns the goof of the Evid. The very body of the Evid is owned by the ma- master. You can't just tell him, free, go. He has a certain status. He's, he's not a Yid, he's a guy. he's owned by him 100%. Here, when it comes to an evidivri, what's the ownership of a master in an evidivri? That he works for him. It's, it's almost like a worker, just like a pile, a person that works. A worker works a certain job or works a certain schedule. He's owned by his master that he works for him all the time. But it's just the money, the value of the malacha that he owns him. So what's if the master comes and says, you're free to go? So he's basically being Michael and saying, you don't have to work for me anymore. So that should be enough to free him. Why would you need an actual star to write in it that you have a proper star that you're meshukhra? Answers the Gemara, oh, Marave, the fact that this Braise says that he can free him with a shtar, but it has to be a shtar, you can't just tell that to him. This, this, this teaches me, Eved Ivri Gufay Konei, that even by an Eved Ivri, there is a Kenyan that the Master has in his Guf. And Vaharav Shemachal Al Giroina, and therefore the Master that says, I forgive the money you paid me, and you could just go free just like that. It's not going to be machal. You can't forgive that because there's a certain kinyan in the guf that he has that at, at least while he's owned by, while he owns him, he has a kinyan in him and therefore he's going to have to either give giroin kesef or a proper star. And as she says, like, the star is taka learned out from Evid Kanani. If by Evid Kanani star works, for sure by Evid Ivri a star should work. So all the Rishayim discussed the Lashon of the Gemara here because it sounds like superficially the words of the Gemara that it's saying that an Eved Ivri, the master owns him, his guf mamish, just like a master owns an Eved Kanani. But the Gemara doesn't mamish mean that. And there's a discussion in Rishayinim what exactly the, the guf Kani regarding Eved Ivri consists of. It's not the same level of guf Kani like an Eved Kanani. Eved Kanani, you own a mamish like an object. He's yours 100%, the guf. By Eved Ivri, there are certain aspects in, uh, in uh, his work for you that you own his guf. But it's not, but, but, but so therefore you need a shtab, but it's not the same as Evid Kanani. Okay, Taisus over here says, I mean, there's an there's a obvious question. Why did the Mishnah not say shtar? The Mishnah said the different ways how he goes free. The Mishnah did not mention shtar. So the answer is because the Mishnah is only mentioning those ways that an Evid goes free, even if the master doesn't agree. It just goes free automatically against the master's will. Over here, shtar though, is that's only when the master decides. He can give him a shtar and free him. So that, that the Mishnah doesn't mention. 
Okay, so the Gemara Vaiti is saying that all of Amma Ivriya said in the Mishnah that by Amma Ivriya there's additional ways that she goes free. Right, and the Mishnah said that uh, she goes free if the Simonim, she shows signs that she's already a Gedoyla, the signs of two hairs, and so on. Uh, okay, that's, yeah, um, Simonim. Okay, so the Gemara here brings for, uh, that there's another way, the Shlokish said that there's an additional way Amma Ivriya can go free. Amma Ivriya Shlokish, Amma Ivriya Kainis Atzma Bemisasa. She goes free if her father that sold her died, so then she also goes free from the uh, ownership of the master. And and this is understood with the following Kavachaime. Uma Simonin, if when it comes to her becoming a Gedela, she shows those Simonin. She doesn't yet leave the possession of the father. She's in the Rishus of the father until she's a Begeris, 12 and a half years old. Might see him, but it's just But nevertheless, those simonim, she right away leaves from the master. So misa she might see him, but it's just hab. When her father dies, so she obviously leaves the possession of her father. So any din she might see him, but it's just hab. So definitely, this should also take her out from the rishus of her master. So therefore, therefore, the shlokish says this is the halacha. The father dies automatically; she gets freed from the master. So the gemara is going to bring a few questions on the shlokish's chiddush. So meis ve ravaishiye ravaishiye asks. It says in a brayse. Or, sorry, the Mishnah actually, going back to our Mishnah here. He said, all of Amevriah, the Mishnah says that Amevriah could leave an additional way when she has Simonim, when she's a Gedayla, but Ve'emisa, if what Ishlakish says is true, Nistinami, Misa Sa'av. Why would our Mishnah not say that Amevriah also leaves when her father dies? And says the Gemara, Tone Vishaya. The Mishnah learns and teaches certain ways that uh, she goes out, but it leaves, doesn't say all the ways. Frag the Gemara, my Shayer, the high Shayer, what else did the Mishnah leave out? The rule is the Tana will never leave out just one thing. If it's leaving out a few, so then it's possible that it's an incomplete list. So what else did it leave out? Shayer Misisadin. What it's leaving is, what's if the master himself dies? She also goes out free, obviously. She's not inherited to the children in such a case. That's the Allah, but get to Omevriya, she never goes over to the child. So that's also left out. Says the Gemara, the fact that the Mishnah doesn't mention this, that's not called the Mishnah leaving out one case. Why? Because the Kivan, the Ikanami Be'ish, like Katani. Over here, the Mishnah is coming to say, you say that, that Omevri has additional ways she goes out. If the master dies, that's a different story. That's not even mentioned, not by Ish either. The master died. So obviously, there's no Yerusha, there's no, so she, she, she goes, she or he or she goes out free. So, the Ella. So the so, so what's um, the reason? Again, the Gemara comes back to the question: If the halacha of Rishlakish is true that she leaves when the father dies, so then why didn't the Mishnah mention it? Ve'ela nisni. So the answer is tane davish tane davish eshle kitzve ketani. The Mishnah mentions a way that she goes free, which is clear, which is a very specific time. Davish eshle kitzve le ketani. Something that's not clear. It's not a specific time. The Mishnah didn't learn. If the father dies, that's not a specific time, so that the mission didn't learn. But when it comes to the signs of maturity, when hairs grow in her body, so over there it can come earlier, it can come later, it's not always exactly at the same time. And nevertheless, the mission does mention that. So Rav Safra explains, Even though you're right, that it, 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 as far as the age, it can come by 12, 13, 14, it can come in, 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 older and older, but in the age below, the younger, there is a certain point that we say that those simonim are not any simonim. So there is a certain kitzvah, certain young, uh, when she's young, that if it came then, it's not a simon at all. As we see here in the Braise, the Tanya, the Braise says, Venteisha shonim sides, a girl that's nine years old, and there's, and there's hairs that grow. So shuma. So in that age, those hairs are not any simon that shows on maturity. It's just there must be some, some kind of a shuma, some kind of a growth, a wart, or whatever it is in these hairs. It's nothing. We bent test shonim from the age of nine, v'yoy mechad. She's already nine years old. Ad ben yud beis shonim v'yoy mechad until the age of 12. V'yoy dom boy. And the hairs are still there. So the Tanakama holds, it's still shuma. Still not a sign that she's a gadayla. But Rabbi Yisrael by Yudaim Simon, if the hairs remain until she's twelve, so then it's already a sign that she was a gedola from when the hairs began growing. And you gimel shana v'yaymechad from the age of thirteen, Dibriak kol Simon. Here everybody will agree that this, the, the hairs that grow are a Simon that she's a gedola. Rashi brings the Gemara and Nida asks why does it jump to Ben Yud Gimel? 
it should say uh, over here by this girl, it should say Ben Yud Beis. Okay, the Gemara and uh, neither discusses it. But the point is, we see over here in this Braise that there's a, there, there's a kitzvah. There is a certain kitzvah lamata that below a certain age, she's not going free. It's not a simon at all. So therefore, this is the answer why it says simonim, but it does not say Misa Sa'av, because when it comes to Misa Sa'av, there's no kitzvah to this. And that Tatana doesn't mention. Another question the Gemara asks on Ishlokish, Mosul Rav Sheshe, the Braise says as follows Rav Shimon Noim, Rav Shimon says, Dalid Manikin Lehem. There are four situations of when an Eved or an Amma Ivriya leaves that they get Hanukkah. So Hanukkah, we learned already about before, is the gifts that a master gives when they leave. Now, Gimel Be'ish, there are three times when they leave, is, that's by the Eved, and the Gimel Be'isha, and there are three that are by the Isha. And so what, what the Gemara, what this uh, Braise means to say is, the Gimel by the Ish and the Gimel by the Isha is <coughs> that when the, the Ish leaves after six years, and by Yoival, and also if the Master dies. That's what the Gemara thinks right now, it refers to the Master dying. That's the three by the Ish. And the three by the Isha is also six years, and Yoival, or the Simonim, like the Mishnah said, as the Simonim. Okay, but in total, there are four, four different ways that they could leave. But only three of them apply to the Ish, and only three of them apply to the Isha. Not the Gemara asks on this, if Rishlokish, what Rishlokish said is true, vi, 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 one second, before first let's finish the Loshna of the Braise. You can't say that both the Ish or the Isha, that there are four ways that either of them could leave. Why not? Because one of the ways only work for the Omivriya and not for the Ish. That's Simonim. On the other hand, this Allah of Misa Sa'adain, which is unique for a Ish. Why? Because that re- applies to an Eved Nirza. The Eved Nirza doesn't leave after six years. He leaves by Yoival or he leaves after the, his master dies. And this concept of Ritzia does not apply to an Isha. Okay, now the Gemara asks, hey, Misa, if what Ish Lakish said is true, Nisni Nami Misa Sav. Why doesn't it say over here, there's an additional way. There's Misa Sa'av, and that additional way of Misa Sa'av applies, and now you could have four by the Oma Ivriya herself, the three that we mentioned, and in addition, a fourth one, which is when the father dies. And if he'll say, true, she leaves when the father dies, but Tana Bishai, the Raisa teaches, but it leaves out. How can you say it leaves out? It gives a number. It says four. Now, if you'll say, yeah, it gives a number. Why is it give a number? Because Tane, Davish Yesh, like Kitzvah Ketani, it gives a number for these ways of freedom that are very specific in a time. If a Davish Yesh, like Kitzvah, like Ketani, like we said before, when the father dies, that has no Kitzvah, therefore it doesn't mention it. But it mentions here Simonim that doesn't have a set time, the Ketani, and it mentions it. If you'll answer like we already answered before. Oh, we answered before. Rav Safra said that even though the, there's no kitzvah in the age older and older when it comes, but there's an age in the young, younger when we know that the Simonim are not a simon, so there is a certain kitzvah to it. But in the Braise here, when it mentions the ways that she goes out, one of them is if the master himself dies. The Emlem kitzvah. If the master himself dies, that's not a kind of a freedom where there's any time frame for this. Vikatani. And it says it over here. So the Gemara answer is, no, we didn't, we didn't understand the Braise right. The Braise doesn't spell out what the, all the ways are. It just says three by the Ish, three by the Isha. It says the Gemara, it, it, it's not, one of them is not Misa Sodin. Misa Sodin, Nami Leikatani. That's not one of the ways that this Braise is talking about when the Eved or the Omer goes free. Ve'elar ba mainu. So when it said here that there's four ways that she goes out, what are the four? So the Gemara here gives a list of the four now. Shonim, after six years, V'yoyvul, Yoyvul for a regular Evet, and then V'yoyvul Shoritzia, the Yoyvul for an Evet, after his ears were pierced and he stays until Yoyvul, that's counted as a separate thing. And then V'oma Ivriya B'Simonim. And then by the Oma Ivriya, she additionally goes out with Simonim. That's the, those are the four ways that we're mentioning here. So we're not mentioning not Misa Sa'adain and not Misa Sa'av either, because there's no kitzvah to that. Hachanami Mistavre, and the Gemara says, this must be the Pshar and the Braise. Because the Ktani Seifer, what does it say in the Seifer of the Braise? Not by the Ish or by the Isha is there four ways that she goes out. And the and Braise says, why? Because the man does not leave with Simonim. And there's no concept of piercing the ear by the Isha. 
Now, but v'im isa, if you're going to say that we are counting misas ha'odayin, so v'isha mi'a mishkachas la'arba. So by the isha, there should be four. There should be shanim, yoival, and simanim, and misas ha'odayin. So shema mino, it must be that misas ha'odayin is not one of them that are mentioned in this b'risa. Okay, the Gemara has one more question here on Ishlakish, and this will actually refute the statement of Ishlakish. Again, Ishlakish said that the Omivriya leaves when her father dies. Most of Rav Amram, so Rav Amram asks him this, the Brisa says, <laughs> The following, when they leave their master, their master has to give them the gifts of Anoka. After six years, after and if when the master dies. And the Omevriya with Simonim. And the Omevriya with Simonim also gets Anoka. So if what Shlokish said is true, why doesn't it say if the father died? So the Gemara goes through the same discussion that I had before again. If you're going to say the Bryce is leaving something out, but it says these, Elam means this is it. It uses the term Elu because it's only these that have a set time. And it's not mentioning things that have no set time. But it mentions Simonim that does not have a set time. If you'll answer like we already answered. Rav Safra said that it does have a set time. That younger, when it's younger, that they're not Simonim. But it mentions here clearly that when the master dies, she goes free. And that has no kitzvah. So why does it not mention Mises Av as well? To Yufte, that Ish Lakish, or this refutes what Ish Lakish said, to Yufte. And here for this, the Gemara doesn't have any answer. From Simonim. The Gemara said before, Kavachayim was that if I see that Simonim that does not take out from the father, takes out from the master, so the death of the father, so she does then leave the father's possession for sure, she'll take out from the master. So what's, what, what do we do with this Kavachayim? Answers the Gemara, Kavachayim, Perichihi. This Kavachayim is refuted. We can't use this Kavachayim. Why? There's a very simple refutation here. Mali Simonim, when we see that Simonim is Maitzi Omevriya Shanishtana Akuf. The reason is Simonim is something very strong. It's a new person. She's mature. It's like a Shini Akuf. It's not the same person that was sold that, that she is now. Now she's mature. That's why she goes free. Time of Misa Sav, she can't learn a Shtana Akuf. So how can you learn a Kavachayim to Misa Sav over here? She's, it's the same Guf, it's the same person. So therefore she does not go free, even if her father passed away. Now the Gemara here brings two b'raises that are a contradiction, and seemingly the only way to explain these b'raises is with what Ishlakish said. Tani chade, in one b'raise it says, Anak evedivri la'atzmai. When you give the gifts to an evedivri, he keeps it for himself. Va'anak amayivriya la'atzmai. And the same thing with amayivriya. When she goes free, who gets those gifts? She gets it. But for Tani yidach, in another b'raise that we learned, Anak amayivriya umitziyasa, the hanaka that amayivriya gets, and any mitziyah that she finds, la'aviya, Goes to the father. Now, as far as the Metsi is concerned, the, 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 the master does not get the, the actual Metsi itself. He only gets Schar Betele, which is the Schar that uh, she would have to work at that time. That's uh, the, the, the Schar that the master gets because she, she was supposed to work for him when she went and got that Metsi. But here, the Gemara is going to focus on the beginning of this b'raise. In one b'raise it says that the Hanukkah goes to her, the gifts go to her. In another b'raise it says it goes to the father. So my love, don't you think? If she's leaving her master when she becomes a Naira with Simonim, so then she, she keeps it herself. But if we're going to say like Rishlokish, that when the father dies, and then she goes free, so then when the father dies, again, let me say that again, if she leaves with Simonim, if she leaves with Simonim and the father is still alive, so then who gets the uh, Hanukkah? The Hanukkah goes to the father because the father is still alive. And even though she has Simonim, she still is in the possession of the father as a Naira. She still belongs to the father, so the father gets the Hanukkah. And But if she's leaving her master when the father dies, so then the father died. So she gets to keep it for herself. So the only way to explain this Bryce is according to the Shlokish. So the Gemara says, Loi, that's not the Pshatter. She only leaves her master when she becomes mature with Simonim. But like Kashi, there's no question here. In both cases, she's leaving with Simonim. But over here, the father's still alive. So the father gets it, like everything else of the night of the father gets. And here, if the father already passed away, so then she keeps it herself. But not that she leaves when the father dies. She doesn't leave when the father dies. Okay, the Gemara explains one more detail here in this Braise. We understand when the Braise says that Hanoke goes to the Amevriya herself, 
What's the Chiddush over here? Lumute Yachin. It's coming to say that it doesn't go to the brothers. You would think maybe after the father passes away, so who gets the Sanok? And maybe the brothers Yarshin it. The Tanya, so we learned in the Braise, Vesnachal Tamoisum, Lufnechem Achrechem. This is by Evid Kanani. So they get inherited to the children. Oisum Lufnechem, only Evid Kanani are inherited by the children. Veloy Benoisechel Lufnechem. But your daughters, the Ome Ivriya, there's no inheritance to the brothers, to the children from this Ome Ivriya. Any schos that a father has that comes to the father from his daughter, any income, including the Hanukkah, goes to the father. It doesn't go to any other children. So, so that we understand what the Chiddush of the Brais is. But Elo, Anak, Eved, Ivri, La'atzmei. When the Brais says that you give the Hanukkah the gifts to Eved, Ivri, so he keeps it himself, Pshit, it's obvious. Elo, Laman, who else should you give it to? Amr of Yosef, Sir of Yosef says about this lashon of the Braise, Yud Kras Chazina Hacha. This is an interesting expression. What it means is Yud is the smallest letter of the Aleph base, and Kras is a big city. And what the Gemara is saying is the Braise took a, a small point, which is really no Chiddush, and turned it into a city. It mentioned it for no reason, as if it's a Chiddush, but there's really no Chiddush in this. That's what Rav Yosef says. But Abai Yoma, Abai says there is a Chiddush. Hachi Yomer Rav says this is what Rav Sheishes said. Ha Mani Tutoihu. This Bryce is following the opinion of the Tutoi, the Tanya Tutoi Yomer, that the Chiddush here is Loi v'loi l'bal choivoi. When the master gives the Anoke, that goes to the Eved himself. If the Eved owes someone money, we're not going to say, let the master give it to that person that the Eved owes money to. Remember, we had before in the Gemara, like the Allah of Shibuddha the Rav Nassim, that it should go directly to that person that the money is owed to. That's what the Bryce is saying, that it does not go to that person, but it goes directly to the Eved himself.